Good morning, my friends. It is another beautiful week to work on raising our vibe. And I am so darn excited to see all of you here this morning. Good job waking up early. I guess it's not that early for some of us, but, but you're here and you're ready. And I see tons of smiles and that is a great thing. You guys, we are in for an amazing treat this morning. And I can say this for two reasons. One, because I know Britta Dimmler very well. And two, because I have had a sneak peek into what she is going to be sharing today. And I cannot wait. So I'm actually in Michigan today. So we have a little bit of a different background. And I was so excited that I'm like, I'm not going to miss this. So Britta, thank you so much for all of the work that you put into preparing not only for this morning, but for this whole week. I cannot wait for it to unfold. And I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. Awesome. Skyla, am I a, um, oh. can I share a screen? Oh, I think I can. Maybe. Let me make sure. Not yet, oh. but you can. Okay. okay. So let me, if you can do that. All right. So I am really excited. I, you know, when, <laughs> when we agreed to do this or we all said, yeah, let's do this mindset thing. I was like, oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be super easy. But you guys, it's when you're, when you're preparing things and um, posts and classes and whatnot, boy, it makes you focus and look at your own mindset. <laughs> and what and it really makes you evaluate what am I, am I just speaking this out or am I actually implementing this into my life? And so I really hope that you all are being encouraged and also challenged this over the last couple of weeks and then to through the rest of this month to really look at what are we doing? Who are we, who are we surrounding ourselves with? How does that play a part? Um, and I, I, my husband and I were talking about this because as I was preparing one of the posts, it's going to be about um, our circles and the people that we hang out with and, you know, what the influence that they have in our lives and what we allow people to speak into our lives. And I had to ask my husband because I could not find this quote anywhere, but he said that it was uh, Charlie Tremendous Jones, which was an old book. I can't remember what the book is called, but Charlie Jones says that um, who we become is determined by the people that we hang out with or that we surround ourselves with and the books that we read. And I would say in today's world, the social media that we consume. Um, and I say social media even more than television, right? Because we are inundated with influences and with um, positive and negative beliefs and people that want to, um, you know, they want us to believe and agree with them. And I think that it's super important to look at what is it that I really believe and how is that, how is, is that playing out in my life? And so um, I'm going to show a Bob Proctor video first. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, um, I, I have some old training CDs that Gary did, and I listened to one of them this week. And so we're going to talk about um, oils and beliefs that go along that can help you, because when the beliefs come up, he created oils to help us counter those, okay? And I've created a chart for you that I'm going to post it um, in an hour or two. So you can see this, but then this whole next week is going to be about oils and about different specific products that Gary created and why he created those for us so that we can change what's going on up here and what's going on emotionally. Okay. Because we all have our stuff, right? Iowa this last week on Monday had a Direco and I think that's how you say it. Um, so it was like hurricane force winds that went across 770 miles of the Midwest. So it wasn't just Iowa, but it destroyed people's livelihoods and properties. And I look at these pictures of these huge grain bins that are just crushed. And I see pictures of, you know, some of my team that have lost parts of their homes and the roofs just, I mean, it's just blew off. It looks like almost like a big dollhouse that you could just go in and move the furniture around. And when I'm talking to these people, you guys, they could be total doom and gloom and the, and the world's coming to the end. And, you know, it's just so terrible and over because it's overwhelming and looking at the pictures, it's overwhelming. But instead of focusing on that, they're saying, this is what we could do today though. This is the next step. We're cutting down the trees today or we're cutting down, you know, we're, we're removing the little boards or removing the, the carpet or whatever it is. And that attitude is what's going to move them forward in life. And really it affects everything that we do. Skylar was without a power for 
I don't know, like 80, 80 hours, I think. And you guys, if you think you're not dependent on power, <laughs> none of this happens without power, right? We don't have internet. We don't have phones. We don't have computers. We don't have Zoom. Um, and you have to really guard what, how am I spending my time online or what am I doing? And so again, we, it, when we guard our time with the electricity and the, the availability of my battery power, I need to guard my thinking and guard my heart as well. Okay, so hopefully this works. Then I can share this screen and I can find it quickly. Too many things open. All right, so and he talks, it's fast. I will post a link to this video so you can watch it multiple times if you want, because it's really, really good. Um, and so take notes if you want, or just sit back. I would actually just encourage you, just sit back and listen to this and listen to um, just the things that he's saying and see what resonates with me. And if something resonates, make a quick note, but don't try to write down everything because um, I wrote down a lot yesterday as I watched it again and I had to stop it and replay it. So that's what I would encourage you to do later if it resonates with you, um, but just listen to what he says, and then we'll talk about it at the end of what, what, what impacted you the most. We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. That's the only limit we've got. Weakness of attention, got to focus on what it is you want. You've got to give it your undivided attention. And poverty of imagination. Use your imagination to build enormous pictures. See great things happening in your life. Make a decision to become one with whatever you want. A lot of people are wandering around, they don't know what to do. Their life isn't going where they want it to go. They're not doing what they want to do. And they're stuck. And they don't know how to change it. You see, we've got the ability to create the kind of life we want but it doesn't happen by accident. Yet, if you don't gain an awareness of who you are and what makes you tick, odds are pretty good, you'll never be free. Most people live in a little cage of their own making and they don't even know it. You and I are God's highest form of creation. There's nothing on the planet that will equal us. Now, I often point out that we're the only creature on the planet that's totally disoriented in our environment. It's true. All the other little creatures are completely at home in their environment. They blend in. We don't. We've been given the mental faculties to create our own environment. It's just that most people don't do a very good job of it. School doesn't teach us how to do it. You write to our educational system, come out and know virtually nothing about yourself. I want you to take your phone and look at it. And, and think of this, let each of those lines on the screen represent a level of vibration. Everything the phone can do, you can do with your marvelous mind. We refer to these levels of vibration as frequencies. And there's an infinite number of frequencies. Now your phone, your cell phone has its own frequency. If I've got your number in my phone, I can hit send, bang, you get the message. Doesn't matter where you are. I could take a picture, hit send, and simultaneously with me hitting it, you'll have it. See, in truth, there isn't any time or space. That's an illusion. We're dealing here with energy and we're dealing with frequencies. We're dealing with energy. Everybody's phone has its own frequency. You know, so do people. You can transfer pictures from your mind to somebody else's mind on the other side of the world, just the same as you can with your phone. Now, most people never really gain an understanding of that or how to do that. But everything you're thinking, you're sending off charges of energy. Thought is energy. Thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. Thought waves makes the laser look puny. It's the most potent form of energy is. Most people don't really know much about it. They don't think very much about it. Every great leader that has ever lived has been in complete unanimous agreement that you and I become what we think about. 
they've disagreed on almost everything else but that one point. We truly do become what we think about. You know, most people think of what they don't want. They spend time thinking about what they don't want. I get so sick of living this way. I'm so tired of never being able to afford it. I'm so sick of not taking a nice vacation. I'm just sick. And, and it's all they're talking about. And they're attracting it. They magnetize themselves to what they don't want. Well, if we will think of the phone, get it straight in your mind. Your mind works like the phone. Do you know that everything we want is already here? You're going to find nothing's created or destroyed. Everything's already here, but we've got to get on the frequency that it's on. We've got to get on in tune with it. And when we do, it comes flying at us. Now, what the secret didn't do, it didn't teach you much about the law of attraction. Talked a lot about it, but didn't teach much about it. Law of attraction is a secondary law. It's not a primary law at all. Law of vibration is a primary law. That law decrees everything vibrates, nothing rests. This whole building and everything in it, you and me and everything in it, is moving. It's, by, it's energy and it moves. It's in a very high speed of vibration. This body we're living in moves. As we activate brain cells, everything in us starts to change. And we can activate those brain cells at will. And listen, most people don't listen. They talk and they hear, but they don't listen. You hear with your ears, you listen with your emotions. Now, everything you want, everything you want is also in its own frequency. I don't know what you want. If I were to sit with you one-on-one, -on -one, that's what I would be digging for. I would be asking questions and I would be wanting to figure out, what do you want? And you know, most people don't know what they want. Look at your present results right now. I want you to really think about your results. If you're thinking about your income, look at your income. If you're talking about relationships, look at your relationships. If you're talking about your health, really take a good look at it. You're attracting what you're in harmony with. Now, if somebody had told me that when I first started, I wouldn't have liked it. Because I didn't like what was coming into my life. I didn't like it at all. But we've got to understand, nobody's given it to us. If it's coming, we've earned it. If we don't like it, we can change it. It's so basic and so simple. Energy attracts like energy. This thing we're living in is a molecular structure. It's a massive energy and high speed of vibration. Yet whatever we're thinking controls the vibration we're in. Because as we think, we activate brain cells and that's what causes us to vibrate. Now, what you're thinking dictates how you feel. Feeling is the language of the subconscious. When you say, I feel, what you're really talking about is the vibration you're in. You say, I feel terrible. You're in a terrible vibration. Change your thinking. Because you know, a person in a terrible vibration doesn't want to hear that. It's almost like they want to enjoy their misery. You know people like that. You now you see somebody else and they say, God, I just feel phenomenal. That they are choosing good pictures. Make a decision to become one with whatever you want. Do you know what the problem with most people? They don't know what they want. They really don't know what they want. And it's rather sad because you can have anything you want. There is absolutely no limits, none. I mean, anything you want, yeah, anything, anything. You create your own life. Doesn't matter what it is. There are laws that govern this whole universe. One of the laws that Carnegie gave us, that's one of the best, he said, any idea that is held in the mind, any idea, doesn't matter what it is, any idea that's held in mind, that's emphasized, that you keep thinking about. Now get this, that's either feared or revered. He said, any idea that's held in the mind that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin to close itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. That's the perpetual law of transmutation. That's the law of the universe. Energy is always moving into form. Whatever you're thinking about, it's moving into form. It's like Van Gogh was asked how he did such beautiful work. He said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. 
Write your goal on a card, carry the card loose in your pocket. Now what happens when I put my hand in my pocket and I touch the card, the sensory factor touch is affected. It sends a light message rifle firing through my central nervous system, strikes those cells in my brain, they're activated and the picture of my goal flashes on my mind. So you see, it's all electronic. You're much like your phone or like your computer. You're in charge and you can dictate what pictures you want coming on your mind. And that picture must move into form. That's an absolute law. We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. That's the only limit we've got. Weakness of attention, got to focus on what it is you want. You've got to give it your undivided attention and poverty of imagination. Use your imagination to build enormous pictures. See great things happening in your life. What pictures are you holding on the screen of your mind? The only limit is weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. Now, attention is drawn through your higher faculty, the will. The will gives you the ability to focus on one idea to the exclusion of all outside distractions, okay? Now, there's two things that you have to know if you really want to live your dream. You have to know where you are, you have to know where you're going, you gotta move in that direction. Now, there's, why are there so many people stuck? Think, if we think about this, it's so simple, why are so many people stuck? Our problem is in paradigms. A paradigm is what's in control of our life to a very large degree. And it's the paradigm that keep people stuck. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Now think, a paradigm is a program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And get this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. Paradigms control your perception. Perception is a mental faculty. Animals do not have perception, humans do. Perception is one of the higher faculties that we've got. Your paradigm controls your use of time. Do you know that every one of us get exactly the same amount of time? We get all there is. No one gets any more than anyone else. Your paradigm controls everything. It also controls your creativity. You'll see some people are not creative and others are. That's not true, everybody's creative. You're creating God's image. Our problem is we got that reversed when we created God in our image. You are a creative being. You are truly a creative being. Your paradigm controls your effectiveness because it controls what you do, how you do it. Yet, of course, your effectiveness is going to dictate your productivity. How productive are you? Now, get this. Your paradigm controls your logic. This is huge. You'll have people say, well, you've got to be realistic. Or they could say, that's illogical. How often does logic stop you? Well, I just, well, you know, that's not realistic. If you can think it, you can do it when you think. And of course, it controls your ability to earn money. But you see, most people really don't understand money. All the money in the world is available to us. All we have to do is earn it. And working happens to be the very worst way to earn money. It's true. Listen, this guy studied 500 of the world's most successful people. And he pointed out in here, if you believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring riches, carries the thought it's not true. Riches, when they come in huge quantities, are never the result of hard work. Riches come if they come at all in response to definite demands based upon the application of definite principles and not by chance or luck. That's all by law. There is no end to what you can earn. None. Now, paradigms keep you boxed in in all of those areas. It's just like there's a box around us. And every time we go to change, we hit the wall. And it doesn't happen. When you make up your mind, you're going to change the paradigm, the wall comes down. But I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't mean you're going to change right away. You make a decision, I'm changing this. 
that wall will come down. Then you'll be in a position to start moving and the wall is down. You're not bouncing off it anymore. And when you say I'm gonna change, just think of this, the change can be huge, absolutely huge. And the change is permanent. You will never go back. You see, awareness is something you cannot lose. Your spiritual DNA is perfect. Do you know what that means? It means there's perfection within every one of us. There's perfection within every one of us. It doesn't require any modification or any improvement. Absolutely none. There is perfection within you. And that perfection seeks expression within through you. That's what causes you to want. My grandmother pretty well raised me. And I'm going to tell you something. Grandma was wrong on this score because she said you should be satisfied with what you've got. Grandma was wrong. Never. You should never be satisfied with what you've got. You should be happy with it. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. Dissatisfaction is going to get you to reach higher. Go further. Run faster. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. It's the spiritual essence within us seeking expression through us. See, there's perfection within us, and it wants to express itself within through us. That's why you want. Everything you own when you die belongs to somebody else. You never own anything. You're nearly a custodian. You should have it, and you should enjoy it, but you never own it. But what you are is your forever. That's why we want to develop a greater awareness. We want to become aware of this perfection within us. Here it's all knowing. What that means, all the knowledge forever was, forever will be is omnipresent. All the knowledge there ever was, all the power. You wonder where does she get all the energy? Where does she go? Nobody gets energy. Everybody releases energy. Desire. It's a triggering message. Magic lets it go. All the power there ever was or ever will be. Quit saying, I'm tired. I don't know where you get all the energy. You've already got it. Release it. Desire. Desire is the triggering mechanism. And it doesn't matter where you are because it's on the present. We're connected to everything. Everything's connected to us. There is only one power. And that's the real you. Are you truly who you pretend to be? Come on. Wake up. Get up. Get up and make it happen. Okay, is anybody pumped and ready to get up and get out there and make it happen? Like every time I watch it, I'm like, yes, I'm ready to go. Let's go do this, right? So I was, I was not able to see anything that you guys were typing. So I would love to hear, um, you know, what you, what were your takeaways from that? Like, what did anything stand out to you that you're like, oh my gosh, that is me. I am, I'm in this state, um, you know, or, or even just talk to me. Well, let's, okay, talk to me about that first. Does anybody want to share anything that you like, whoa, this is, it hit me. Um, you can unmute yourselves. I don't know. Skylar, can they unmute themselves? Let's see. Good morning, Greta. Good morning. This is Hi, Maria. Maria. Hi. Um, I have always attracted lots and lots of critters in my life. I've never understood why. I have like 14 of them on my front porch. It just showed up here, cats. <laughs> if I've possums, wolves, squirrels, it doesn't matter. I attract them. And I just never really understood it. And never really thought about, you know, I have control over this because I'm thinking, wow, I just have too much around here. <laughs> um, and uh, he said, what, um, that I attract what I'm in harmony with. And I have also always said, I get along better with the critters than I do people. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? <laughs> I went, woo, okay. So now I need to work on what I'm telling because that's a paradigm. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know where it came from, but, and it's not a bad one, but um, it doesn't have to be the only thing 
controlling what's coming into my life, what I'm vibrating with and in harmony with. Yes. So thank you for this because I can change it. Yes. And you can change it to, I attract people that are, I, I'm open to, I'm open to anyone who comes to me, right? I'm open to different things. You know, it's interesting and I don't see her on here, but Nita, um, up, up church, right? Skyla, Nita up church is a, she's an energy worker. And we were talking one day, um, about cats and how I am not a cat person, but every time I go to somebody's house, you know, they always come to me and my daughter is like a total cat person now. And she said, my daughter was here last night and she said, yeah, when I go home, you know, like my cats just know when I have a bad day and they'll come and they'll sit on my chest and they purr and stuff. And I said, you know, Nita told me that cats are drawn to negative energy. And so think about this, you guys, if you've been around cats, they're drawn to that, that negative energy. And so um, if you don't like cats, what are you putting out? You're putting out, oh God, there's a cat, right? You're putting out that negative energy. And so then they come and they sit on us and they, they're, the way that their bodies function with us, she said that actually they will pull our negative energy out of us. And then when they they sit there for however long it takes, right? And then they get up and have you ever watched them kind of shake it off afterwards? And they shake it off and then they go out about their day. And, and so I was telling my daughter that and she's like, oh my gosh, mom, because I feel so much better afterwards, after my cats love, you know, she calls it loving on her. I'm like, no, they're just sucking your energy away, you know, the negative and leaving you with the positive. And so think about that, that a lot of us will surround ourselves with, with animals or, um, things that we, that we feel like we can maybe take care of, or that will, that will always accept us, right? Animals will accept us. That's why we have dogs. Um, they will always love us. They're always excited to see me come home, right? Or get up in the morning or whatever, versus my human people are not always so excited to see me. And so, but if I, if I, that's all I'm focusing on, or that's what I'm speaking that, you know, maybe I say to my husband every day, why don't you appreciate me more? Why don't you, you know, love me more or show me whatever? what am I putting out there? I'm not going to get back the appreciation until I say, man, I love that you appreciate me so much. I love that you value and cherish this so much and speaking it as if it's already happened. And we're going to talk about that this week too, um, is, is powerful. So, so Maria, I think it's great to have those animals and there's something about you that's very, that draws them in definitely change, but just start speaking out some of the, um, people part of it too, that people are drawn to you. You have so much to offer and so much to give to people. <laughs> All right. Who else has something that they want to share? <laughs> you guys and the cats. That's funny. I can share. Yeah. So, good, morning. Well, good morning. One of the hardest things for me whenever I watch these videos is realizing that I have attracted my reality, my current reality. And <laughs> I'm like, how am I gonna get out of this? Um, but, and, and I, I think I might've been in the funk before this, this we started because now I feel charged. One thing that I've been doing, so I am, I'm, I'm currently living in my childhood home and it's my house, even though it's, I'm trying to, to, I'm not, I'm, I'm telling myself that I'm already in my dream home. So when I take a shower, I want a sauna in my dream home. So I close my eyes, I let it get really hot. And then I thank God that I'm in my new sauna. And it feels silly, but I feel so good just thinking about having a sauna. <laughs> So thank you, ladies. Thank you. This 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 was amazing, and I can't wait to rewatch it again and change my current reality because I I, I finally feel where I want to be. If that makes sense. I love it. Thank you. Yes, and you guys, that's the whole point of this. Is that we're not going to just like one day wake up and say, okay, I have a sauna, and wow, look at the sauna, and it just magically appears. It's not magic, right? But when we start putting that out there every day, you know, you may find that when you start speaking out that you have a sauna and and how much you love that and 
visualize that, you may find on Craigslist someday that there's a sauna for 200 bucks or something. And you're like, oh, I can have a sauna, right? Or maybe it's the neighbors get moving and they say, hey, would you like the sauna that you didn't even know they had? And that's how things can happen is that we can create that environment to us, okay? When we started building, um, there was nobody in Iowa really doing young living, you guys. And, and, and Skyla and I have the same upline, okay? We are, we're cross-line, so we're both directly under the same person. And this was before Sky, Skyla was maybe just starting to, um, to build. And we weren't really friends yet, and so I didn't talk to her. But I, we t I talked a lot to my upline, and she would call me every night. I worked until midnight um, at a hospital, and she would call me on my way home because she was a night owl, and we would talk for, for my half-hour drive. And she'd say, Britta, can you believe all the people that are calling us today? And I'm like, did you get some phone calls? I didn't get any phone calls. And she's like, Britta, we're conscious languaging this. We're speaking this out. We're speaking out what we want to happen. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, I'll play along, right? Because, and in my mind, I thought it was just kind of a game. But you guys, what I didn't realize at the time is that the more I spoke out, wow, people are drawn to me. People are asking me questions about Young Living every single day. People, God is putting people in my path that, like, people need these oils. And they are just being, they're, they're like, just coming when I started speaking that out and believing it, because we have to speak it so that our ears hear it, and then it gets, it comes back in a different way versus just reading it, that things started happening. And people did start calling me, Britta, will you come do a class for me? Or Britta, you know, and they would ask me questions. And a lot of times I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> Let me find out. And it was super exciting. And then as we grew, we grew really fast. And then, you know, I stopped speaking at you guys. And it's, it, that has changed again, my paradigm. I got comfortable, I got complacent. And so now is the time for every single one of you, whether you are a brand new person or you've been around for 13 years like I have, to start speaking the, what you want. What is it that you desire, okay? And I like desire better than want because Marcella Von Harding, if you've heard, um, I know Skyla posted her Conscious Language CDs um, links, that want means lack, right? And so when we say I want this, it means I'm lacking it. But if I desire this, um, it's just expanding what it is that I'm having into my life, right? My desires are welcoming new things and more things into my life versus I'm, I'm lacking something right now. So I desire this, I desire having people come to me. I desire to share my knowledge of Young Living. I desire to give someone a drop of believe today, right? I desire whatever it is. I desire a sauna. I desire more cats. I don't know. I mean, my, my daughter would say she desires more cats. Um, you know, whatever that is for you in your life, start speaking that out. And it's so incredibly powerful. So Enid, I am so excited to hear about what your sauna when it comes, because I, I am believing that it's going to come soon. So, <laughs> all right, who else has something that they want to share? Anybody? We'll do like one or two more people if they want to share something, and then I've got, I want to wrap it up with Gary's, some Gary's stuff. Britta, I would love to share a really quick story <clears throat> to kind of reiterate what you just shared. Over two years ago, I went to a class that we hosted. Um, Britta and I were not teaching. It was another Crossline friend. Um, and it was at, it was either at the very end of the year or at the beginning of the year, but it was a visioning class. Mm -hmm. And one of the exercises was to just do a total brain dump for, for, ex for purposes of expansion of all the things that you desire to have in your life. And, and we were to envision what did the room look like that we woke up in the morning? And when we went down to the garage, what did we see for a vehicle when we opened the door? And when we stepped out into the front yard, what kind of landscaping was there? And you guys, this was about as big of a stretch for me as anything I had ever done. I'm a very positive person, but I, am, I, I think I'm not very materialistic. And so I never allow myself to think about stuff. What kind of stuff would I want? But I challenged myself to dive wholeheartedly into this exercise. And I was like, okay, seriously, Skyla, if you could have any car in the garage, what would you want? And so then I kind of started, you know, I started noticing things and I'm like, you know, 
if I could have anything, I think what I really, really want is an Infinity QX80. And, and I wrote it down on my paper two years ago. Britta may not even know this, but I have the paper. I did not, but I know where this is going. <laughs> I have the paper with everything on it. And it was ridiculous. All the things that I just thought, I'm going to write it down. Let's prove this wrong. Whatever. Not really. I mean, that's not what I was doing, but, but I thought I'm going to dive wholeheartedly. And so what happened, you guys, is that over the last couple of years, I couldn't have even have told you what an Infinity QX80 was before, you know, this time. I, I wouldn't have been able to identify it or guess. And there may be some of you that are like, I don't even know what that is. Okay, that's where I was at. But once I wrote it down, I started seeing them on the road. And once I started seeing them on the road, I started picturing myself, like what's the, what does the person look like that drives that car? And I'm like, I could be that person. So about a month or so, six weeks ago, Brian and I go on a date every Friday. And on our Friday date, we went out for lunch. And after lunch, we went to a car lot. And we were looking at brand new Infiniti QX80s. And just for the record, if you haven't looked at any recently, the brand new ones are $99,000, okay? <laughs> and I was like, dang, like my daughter just bought a house that was about that same price. And I was like, whoo, that's, that's incredible. But, but I still was envisioning myself like someday I'm gonna be in one of those. I don't know how or when, but, but that is my vision. And I know that I'm in control of raising my Young Living check somehow that I could do that. And I only wanted to pay cash, you guys. I don't want to be in debt, okay? So another week went by <clears throat> and one day I'm in the kitchen and Brian's sitting at the bar on his computer and he goes, hey, come and look at this. I just found a car on um, whatever the car thing is, car, car finder, pet finder, I don't know, whatever you look at to search cars, auto, auto, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he found a QX80. And I said, huh, okay, what, you know, where is it? He goes, well, it's over in Illinois, a neighboring state. I, I don't typically drive out of state on purpose to buy a car, but I'm, I'm intrigued, right? And so I said, well, you know, let's look at it. And so we're looking at the pictures and I said, well, it looks, it looks good. It's used. It's five years old. Um, but so the next Friday we decided, well, let's go on a Friday date. And let's drive to Illinois. Now, can I just put in a plug for freedom? Okay. Because we, because we worked our buns off, you guys, we have the ability to wake up on a Friday morning and go on a date to another state and have lunch and yes, buy a car and bring it back. And so that was what we did. And now I'm sitting here, come, come look out the window of our hotel. Do you see that silver swan down there? That's what Reagan named it yesterday. I don't know why, the silver swan. That is my new Infinity QX80. And that is how it happens. So Enid, I don't know where that swan is coming from. I do not know what it's gonna look like. But you guys, if you keep your, your mind open and your options open and you don't limit yourself, like I could have gotten all weird, like, oh, when I saw the new price tag, like, oh, that'll never happen. I, but I didn't do that. I'm like, maybe I'll start with the five-year-old one and maybe in a few years I'll get the new one. I don't know. Maybe I'll decide I like something else. But all I can tell you is that is one dang sweet ride. <laughs> Rita got to be my co-pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rhonda and Yvonne got to ride in it for a weekend. I absolutely love it. And I'm still not a materialistic person. If it went away tomorrow and, and God gave me something else, okay, that's fine. I'm not like emotionally attached, but just challenge yourself to write some things on paper. What Bob Proctor said in that video about the goal card and touching it and having it in your pocket I've done that. I don't have one currently, which is a darn good reminder that I, I should. Mm -hmm. But when you put the pen to paper, it matters. So 
Brenda, this was amazing. Thank you. That's awesome. I love that story. And you guys, the other thing I want you to know is that the price that she got on that is like half to a, a third of the price of a used one that we found locally because I was telling my husband about it and he actually did go, he went car shopping for him for something else and he saw one on the lot and he's, he goes, well, there was one there for this amount of money. And I'm like, well, Skyla paid like half of that or less than half of that. So there is something to that. And that's where we say that, you know, when I was talking to Enid that, I, that sauna, if she starts, continues to speak that out every day and visualize that, that, that she's in there. And I love that you're doing it in your shower, that you're seeing the, the steam and all the heat and you're just, and the sweat and all of that. And you're, you're seeing yourself in that sauna already. It's going to happen. I think it's fast because that's the, 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 the universe, and I get kind of, I don't love that term, you guys, but there is a law of attraction and a law of energy and vibration that, and Bob was talking about the law of vibration that wants to bring things to us. And when we are on the right channel, um, and he talked about this too, and I wanted to say this, um, that we have to get in tune with the energy because everything that we desire is already here. We have to get in tune with it. My husband was on, he does a check-in um, through, it's actually through the phone. It's an app um, once a week with a group that he's involved with. And we were at my daughter's college. We dropped her off for college on Thursday and we're at dinner and I'm listening to him try to check in and he couldn't check in. And, and he kept saying, hey, I'm here, you know, checking in, whatever, and nobody would respond. And then finally, he must have done something. And he told me later, I was on the wrong channel, right? There was more as like a, a wave of a bandwidth channel. And he said, I had to change the channel. And I heard him telling his, the, one of the other people, I was on the wrong channel. So now I'm here. Can you hear me now? And they're like, yep, we can hear you now. How many of us are on the wrong channel of what the, what, the world wants to give us of what is coming to us. How many of us are speaking, you know, maybe we just need to tweak one little thing about what we're saying and how we're speaking and how we're putting it out there. Okay. Maybe we need to, and again, we're going to talk about this week. We're going to talk about Dr. Emoto and the, and water. And if you, and I'm going to show you a couple of videos and I want you to look up pictures of this because it's so powerful when we speak positive things. Did you know that water has a vibration? And I have some friends, actually our upline created a water bottle that has all these positive affirmation words on it. But I'm looking for a dry erase marker. Um, this isn't it, but we'll, we'll just say this. One of the things you could do right now is write on here, um, brave, right? So if I wanna be brave today, I could write brave with a dry erase marker on my water bottle. And every time I look at that, I could say brave and drink my water and I could speak to this water, you're brave, you're, you know, like I'm amazing or whatever it is. And the water takes on my vibration. Okay. And then when I consume that water, you guys, it's going into my cells. Our bodies are over 70% water. So when we consume this, the positiveness of this, it, it happens in our bodies and we, it's going to change things. Yes, gratitude and love written on, on post-it notes. We used to put um, on my mirror, we had diamond, right? Or we had, well, we had, we had gold and then we had platinum and then we had diamond. And as soon as we hit diamond that day, my then probably, let's see, seven-year-old said, mom, where's the crown sign? You need to put crown diamond up there. Like she was on it because she knew that every day when I walk into my bathroom and I would see that on the mirror, that I would say, I'm a diamond, I'm a platinum, or I'm a, I'm a silver, whatever it is, okay? Some of you might be like, I'm a star, because you guys, we all, stars are so important. And man, when you get that first check as a star, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I look at the lives I'm changing, and, and really think about whatever your check is, think about what that really means. It's not just $50. It's you have changed a life. You have shared these oils and the potential of these oils with someone today, you know, or this month. And because of what you've done and the lives that you're touching, that is changing so much more. So Gary created this, and, and maybe some at some point we'll, we'll play this video or this um It's a, a training. It's over an hour long though. So I didn't, that's why I chose not to, to play it today. But he talks about, he created blends to deal with 
emotions and events of our life, okay? And the things that we deal with in life, things like um, the focusing on the past, right? Being unhappy, being in want or need. He, he created blends that are the opposite of that. And so I'm going to post a picture late, um, in, at, I think at 11 central is when I have it scheduled for. And so it says present time, which is an oil that we have, right? Deals with the past. And so you'll see the, the oils in one column, the first column, and then the motion or the, the situation that it deals with. But Gary said every, for every 30, or I'm sorry, for every 60 seconds that we are, let's say dealing, living in the past, um, it, well, first of all, all of the past things create acid in our bodies, okay? And do you know what acid does in our bodies? It's like eating it, our eating things up, right? It's oxidizing our bodies. It's causing stress. It's causing disease and illness. So for every 60 seconds that we choose to live, let's say in the past instead of present time, that we are one minute out of being in the present, right? We're one minute, every time, for every 60 seconds we choose to be angry, we are one minute out of humility, okay? And out of peace and joy. For every 60 seconds that we choose to, to blame or to accuse someone or to focus on that, we are one minute out of forgiveness. And so, and when we're living in those, <laughs> dysfunction isn't the word, but in the negative, we are choosing, because it's a choice, to be out of the positive. And you guys, I, I will say this week, I have struggled a lot because, you know, putting my, taking my daughter to college five hours away and just all the emotion around that. And I was at to different times in that situation as we're moving her in, in or whatever, I chose to feel discarded and I chose to feel rejected, right? And I struggled and I cried and I was like, oh, this is so hard. And so I chose not to live in joy during those 60 seconds or three minutes or whatever it was, however long it took. And I was able to thankfully process and get back into, I'm not choosing this anymore. I choose to enjoy the time I have with her right now. I choose to offer her a new, situ a new um, experience. I choose to do whatever, right? So every time we do, we we, the negative comes up, we can choose something different. And when we start looking at that, um, we can start, we can grow and we can flow because that's what life is about. And Gary said, don't worry about the hiccups along the way, because when it's in God's purpose and mission, there will always be hiccups and stones, but flow and grow happens too. And what we focus on grows. So if we want to focus on um, belief, Okay, which believe this will always, always challenge doubt. Okay, and when we focus on believe and belief and the positive, doubt will, doubt will start getting lower and lower. Okay, doubt may still come up and then you get out your believe oil again. And uh, this is in one of my posts this week, but Frances Fuller um, is a Royal Crown Diamond in, is she in Bali now, I think? And she is kind of, she opened the Asian market at the age of like, I know, 63 or something, she decided to go to Asia and open that market for um, Young Living. And I had the opportunity uh, several years ago to sit with her in Ecuador and just, I said, just tell me your story. I want to learn from you. And she is such a giving, lovely woman. And she talked to me about when she was at Silver Retreat, she said that Gary, they were, you know, there was like, I don't know, 15 people maybe, because it was very small back then. And she said, Gary said to them, who wants to be a diamond? And she said, everybody else was like, yeah, I want to be a diamond. And she didn't raise her hand because she said, I could not believe, I could not picture myself as a diamond. I couldn't see it. I didn't, I was, I thought maybe gold, I don't know, but not, there's no way I could be diamond. And Gary told her to get out, believe. And so every day, from then on until this day too, she carries believe with her and she dumps it on her, the top of her head. And that's all she does. So if you do nothing else, go buy some believe you guys, cause this is a powerful oil. And she actually, as we're sitting at this table in Ecuador, she anointed me. She dumped some on my head. She dumped it on her head too. She'd already done it that day, but you're not going to get too much, right? So you can dump it on your head multiple times a day. But she said, Britta, when you start to believe that it can happen for you, there is no limit on what, on what the positive can be. There's no limit to the expectation we can have. There's no limit to the, the gifts that 
are out there for us. Okay. And this isn't just a prosperity thing because it's not about, pro you know, it, it's not that mindset. This is truly the law of vibration and the law of attraction. And when I believe that this is coming, there is nothing that will stop it. Okay. So I, I really want to encourage you to get this and to focus on what it is that you desire. Focus on what it is that you, that you, and, and see, you know, visualize it like Skyla said, and maybe at some point we need to do one of those visualizations for this group, Skyla, because, and I'll admit, I have trouble seeing that too sometimes, but when I start to think about what is it that I, that I desire, and maybe it's not for me, what do I desire for my team? What do I desire for the people that are coming up? What do I, I desire for the stranger on the street that's struggling with, with, whatever it's going on behind their doors, right? What do I desire for the people in the hospital or the people at where, um, at wherever it is? When we focus on that, it will come to us and we are going to be, we are going to be the world changers that this world needs. And I absolutely believe this world needs some changing. So that's all I have for you guys. I don't know if anybody else has anything they want to share. Um, I appreciate you all coming and listening and right I like, yeah go ahead can, can I share sure Hi, so, hey how are you good so for those of you who don't know I met Britta probably about I guess like two years ago now Britta almost almost two years ago um with a retreat that I won um for one of our like initiatives um and we went to um beauty school together and I was at the stage then of getting like I had executive volume of 10,000 um but I didn't have a proper structure and so I went one whole year basically um at executive and, and kind of went up and down wasn't quite sure and I mean I've got Rhonda God bless her she is so good at speaking positiveness and you know words of affirmation and all those things and I wasn't quite there for one whole year plus <laughs> and then in January this year I finally said, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a vision board. And I've been meaning to do it for a long, long time and busy schedule just never got around to do it. And trust me, when I tell you guys, I was never a person that believed in vision boards. It was kind of that crazy stuff that people did. <laughs> I'm being honest with you, <laughs> crazy stuff they did. I did not believe in going to motivational speakers. I thought that was just all a waste of time. I mean, they always said some good things. Cause I'd been to one or two, but it was still kind of like hocus pocus in my mind. But I, this time I said, I'm going to build my vision board. And I wrote my vision board and I put on it that I wanted to hit silver by, um, by March. <laughs> and, um, and I wrote it and we were doing the abundance kind of challenge, I guess. I don't know what we want to call it with Rhonda them. And so we'd get up every morning and starting in January, you know, new year, new stuff. And I would do my devotion and I would write down in my journal, I'm going to have builders, which I didn't have. I'm going to have this, that, and all the things that I need. And, and then I would visualize, I have builders. And I would also write, I'm thankful for my builders. I'm thankful that I'm going to hit that I'm going to do this. And I'm thankful I can pay this bill with that money when it comes in, you know? And so it was a lot of words of affirmation, not just this is what I want, but I was thanking God in advance for the blessing that I was going to receive. And then in March... Um, the Young Living announced that they were going to um, start this silver bound bonus. And I was like, I don't want to hit silver in March because I won't get it. It's going to start in April. I want silver in April because I want to get that, that check. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I had written it down and I had sowed the seeds and I, and I didn't do anything major that month. I mean, Young Living did come here that month. So that probably helped as well. But you know, guys, like halfway through the month, I looked at Rhonda and I was like, I can't stop it. It's happening. It's like so happening. And all along, even leading up to it, I was like, I can feel it, Rhonda. I'm like, this is my year. This is it. I, I can just, there's a difference. There's a, there's a shift in my thoughts of how I look at things and how I approach things and how I'm, you know, really, it's not just I'm trying to do something and it's not just like, what can I do differently? It's that from a mental standpoint and a heart standpoint that, God is going to bless me with this because we need this and because I'm asking and because I've been sowing seeds, you know, and it was, it, it happened and I am still in awe, but I just continue to look at my vision board and I've got my car on the wall as well. And we're looking at it now and my husband's giving me all the wrong right reasons why it's not a wise choice. And I'm like, it's on there. And in my mind, I say, 
it may not be the car I get, the next car I get, but it's going to be the car I get. And when I get that car, he's not going to have anything to say because I'm going to have all the money to pay for it. And it won't matter because I paid for it. You know what it kind of way? It's not like it's the right car. It's got good gas. It's like the car that I like. And it's on my vision board for a reason. Um, so long story short, um, I, I cannot encourage you guys enough to make a vision board, write it down in the journal, you know, write it in your pocket. And I haven't done the pocket one yet. So I'm going to do the pocket one. I'm going to be like, every time I put my hand in my pocket, I want to remember what my next goal is and focus on it and intentionally um, aim to get there. And so, um, oh, what car do I want? I want, um, I had a GMC before I had my fourth child. It's not a fancy car, it's a GMC Acadia. This is not terribly expensive, but it's not cheap either. And we sold it to get a minivan, which I can't stand because I'm like, I'm so not a minivan person. <laughs> And so my car, I want to go back to my GMC um, at some point in time, but I, I, I don't think I'll take forever to get there, but because I don't mind getting a second hand one either. I think new cars are overrated. They depreciate by the time you leave the parking lot. But, um, but yeah, so one of these days, but anyway, I just wanted to share for anyone else that was like me, that's kind of saying the wishy-washy, what do you have to lose? Write it down, write it on your water, put it beside your bed, whatever you have to do, but take the time to write down what you want because there's power in actually writing it down or saying it out loud and claiming it versus just kind of sheepishly, um, you know, kind of thinking this is where I want to go, but not really owning it. Anyway, that was me. Yep. And the other thing, the only thing I'll add to that is that when you write it down, put it somewhere that you're going to continue to see it. Okay. Don't hide it away. Don't just leave it in a notebook and close the notebook or flip the page because then you don't see it. Post it, post it everywhere, you guys. Post it, if you, if you go to your closet five times a day, post it in your closet. And every time you go in there, you speak that out. I am whatever, I have whatever. You know, I own, I, you know, I'm being blessed with whatever. So speak it out the way that it already has happened. And we believe in you. I want you to know that 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 um, you know Skyla and and Yvonne and Rhonda, we believe in you guys so much. And Jody, if I don't know if Jody's people are on here, um, but we absolutely we does our desire is that each one of you achieves whatever it is that you that you think in your mind. This is this will this is the next step. Okay, because it's not this not not no one thing will complete you, but that one thing will get you to the next step and get you to the next step. And then as you achieve these goals and these, these desires, make sure that you're continuing to put down what the next one is, okay? That's a mistake I made and I got complacent. So continue to put out there, this is the next one. This is the next thing. This is the next thing. And I have that already. I, you know, the universe, the, the vibration, law of vibration is bringing it to me right now. And we are so excited to celebrate big and little things with you, to encourage you along the way. So I hope that as this week, as we get these oils and we're talking about the different ones, that you will actually, if you have them, use them. And um, if you don't have them, use whatever you have. And I did want to say one thing, Northern Lights Black Spruce, if you have this, this is one of the highest frequency oils, okay? So get this out. If you don't have the other oils that I talk about that day, and, and you have a Northern Lights Black Spruce, use it, okay? If you don't have that, just use whatever oil you have, but use something, stay, say what it is that your desires are, believe that they are coming to you, and then put some of these other oils if they if as you're reading about them you think oh this I like this it sounds good put that on your next ER so that you will have it and you can start using that every day okay sacred mountain is one of my favorite oils um, because it just totally grounds me and it centers me and it helps me to be like not scattered not bitchy <laughs> not mean but just to be like okay I like I can do this. And so whatever that is, it might be lavender for you. It might be lemon. Okay. So don't discount those oils that are in the PSK, um, but just use them. You have to use the oils or they do no good. And so as we go through these, I, I really encourage you to put them on, say your, your, uh, your things out loud that you're doing, do the challenges, do the things that we're, that we encourage you to do and tell us, what's going on because that is our that's our motivation right now is to know that we're helping you change your life because all we can do is give you the stuff you do the work we love you guys i hope you all have a great weekend thank you britta 
You're welcome. Thank you, Britta. You're welcome. Thank you for running. Thanks, Britta. Thank you.